Welcome back, everybody. Um, today, we're going to be talking about one of the candidates for Maryland governor. Um, as a Christian, politics is an important part of my life um, because, and it should be an important part of everybody's life because what they do as governor, as legislator, as judge, as mayor, as city council, as county commissioner affects us in our day-to-day -day lives. Once in our country, uh, it was recognized that the less government you had, the better off the people would be. However, in today's world, it seems that most people think that the more government you have, the better off you will be. I don't subscribe to that view. I am against that view 110% because the more government we have, the more taxes we pay uh, and the less freedom we have. The problem is, is that when a people loses their moral ability to be free, they will be enslaved by something or someone. And in our case, it is the federal state government enslaving everything under them. That's why the governor's race in Maryland is important to those who live not only in Maryland, but in the surrounding states. Um, so I want to take a look. Uh, I heard on the radio today of one of our local channels, um, an interview with Wes Moore, who is the Democratic nominee for governor of Maryland. Um, and uh, the thing that caught my attention, and I tried to play this back and it wouldn't, so I don't know if like they haven't uploaded the audio yet or what, but um, here Moore also combated Cox's comments of suggesting he, Moore, was a socialist. These word games go on and on anymore. Moore is a socialist. Now, Moore's defense was that he served in the U.S. military. He was in airborne. He worked in private finance. That makes him a not socialist. That doesn't make him anything. It's what he's promoting in his platform as governor that defines whether he's a socialist or not. Period. I served in the U.S. military, and my views are diametrically opposed to Wes Moore. So what does that do? Well, it says that the U.S. military is not a defining or distinguishing quality of what a person's political ideology is. Period. You can serve in the U.S. military and be a socialist. I mean, I, I could show you pictures of, of candidates who graduated from West Point holding up in their hats Karl Marx quotes, obvious co socialists, communists, serving in the U.S. military. So don't tell me that serving in the U.S. military makes you instantly a conservative or a non-socialist or anything else. The U.S. military is full of all kinds of different ideologies. I was in there, I know. So let's go look at Mr. Moore, our candidate, Democratic candidate for governor. And yes, I will do one on Dan Cox, too. He's the Republican candidate. Um, and... If you're aware of Maryland politics, it, it is, uh, shall we say, divisive. Uh, Dan Cox, being a, a Trump supporter and supported by Donald Trump, is, is an, a, a anathema to the liberals, to the socialists, to the Democrats. They hate him. They hate Donald Trump with, with a, a hatred that is nearly beyond belief. Um, but yet, here we are. So anyway, here's Wes's vision. This is his website. Uh, Wes's vision, priorities for Maryland. So let's take it just a quick peek today at what Wes Moore sees as priorities for, for Maryland. The economy, education, health care, transportation, civil rights and social justice. Right there, stop. That shows he's a social. Period. Climate, again, we hit socialism. 
they're going to take over private industry. They're going to force, government's going to force private industry to do what they want them to do in order to, quote unquote, protect the climate. As if we mere humans could do anything about protecting the climate on the earth. Here we have unlocking opportunities for black families. Why focus on black families? Could it be because Wes is black? That seems a little racist to me. You know, I tried to start two small businesses in the state of Maryland. Two. And I went to different entities promoted by the state who help small businesses find funding, who help small businesses develop their programs or processes. And I got turned away every time. Do you want to know what I was told? I'm not a woman, and I'm not a quote-unquote minority. In other words, I'm a white male. I don't get no help. But if I'd have been a black male or a woman or a black woman, I would have got all the help I could. I probably would be sitting here rich with taxpayer funds right now. But oh no, I'm a white male. I'm expected to just do it all on my own. Whereas these people get handouts from my tax dollars because I keep working. How's that equitable in any sense of the term? Labor, always labor, is a socialist issue. Public safety and criminal justice. That one I'm going to dig into a little bit deeper. We'll come back to this one. Here we have gender equality. Really? LGBTQ plus whatever they've added in the last three days. <laughs> Tell me again, Wes, that you're not a socialist when you're promoting this kind of destructive behavior on everybody else. But let's get a look at public safety and criminal justice real quick. He's got a plan. We're not going to look at his full plan in this one. Probably get back to it. Um, violent crime is on the rise across Maryland and people are dying in our streets. No, duh. Baltimore, Montgomery County, Anne Arundel County. All over the place. Murders, crime are on the rise. You know why? Because criminals are emboldened by Democrat policies. The state of Maryland passed the harshest most restrictive legislation ever put on law enforcement. Now, I'm, I'm ex-law enforcement, so call me biased. But I fought this for years. We would go to court with a criminal, present, try to present his criminal history, and it would be rejected by the court because it was prejudicial to the defendant. But now our legislators, what's more included, tell us that all police records for the entire career of the officer must be presented and accepted by the court and reviewed by any jury or judge who's ruling in a case. How's that not prejudicial too? Talk about equitable, fair. Granted, there are bad cops. I know it. I charge cops with crimes. I did internal investigations. There are bad cops. But they are dealt with. The problem is, is that the Democrat socialists who are out there, Westmore included, have created a false narrative. And sadly, most of you buy into it and believe it. And think that what they're telling you is true. When it's not. But anyway, he's dedicated his career to fighting poverty and creating opportunities for the communities. Here he is highlighting the fact he's an army captain and combat veteran. That doesn't mean that he's not a socialist, that doesn't mean that he's not biased. It means nothing, really, in the grand scheme of things. So what's his priority? To swiftly and aggressively combat gun violence by building strong partnerships. Who, who's already doing that? Next, we've got banning ghost guns, which is ridiculous. We already have laws on the books for unregistered firearms. We already have laws on the books for firearms that have serial numbers removed or don't have serial numbers. We already have laws on the books that felons can't possess firearms. This ghost gun 
craze is just another thing created by the Democrats to allow them to continue to erode Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens like myself and others. Uh, reform Maryland's probation and parole system by filling every vacant position. In other words, increase the bureaucracy, increase the government to, to govern and manage these criminals who the state are letting back out onto the streets continually. Now, myself, I'm a firm advocate of the death penalty. You commit certain crimes, you should receive the death penalty and quickly and summarily be executed. And we would have this no longer have this need uh, for parole and probation. And we're going to, of course, now increase funding to allow the criminals to get treatment and housing and employment. Whereas a law-abiding citizen like myself has to fight every day for those things, has to work every day for these things. Oh no, if I commit a crime, I can get thrown into a system that rewards me. Even though I'm probably going to Go back to the life of crime. Uh, he's going to increase resources for state law enforcement agencies. How are they going to do that when they've restricted the activities of law enforcement via the legislation passed in the state of Maryland? Cops have their hands tied by the legislature, by the laws that are in place. It's just that simple. Frankly, I, I look at law enforcement today and, and I don't think I, I could actually serve in it myself for a multitude of reasons but just given what they've done why would I want to put my life, my livelihood my future at risk fighting crime when any allegation that's raised, any allegation, founded or unfounded completely unbelievable or not is used against me and this this is just ridiculous now he's going to reduce our recidivism rate because it's high by increasing investments in re-entry programming. In other words, we're going to pay more to have the criminals brought back into society. We're rewarding criminals. Rewarding them. And we think this is going to solve our problems? Let's look at climate. Well, right away we see that he's for climate change. Uh, and I'm a climate change denier. I follow the science. Unlike the climate changers, I... I remember, and I'm going to do another video on historical perspective. I remember way back in the 70s when chlorofluorocarbons, or fluoro, fluorocarbon, fluorocarbons, I think that's the term, was used, and all of your hairsprays all had to be changed out because it was destroying the ozone layer and going to cause global winter and global cooling. Well, that, that didn't happen, so they cast it aside and they moved on to each and every iteration since then. And now we're at, we, we can't call it global warming anymore because people were catching on and saying, wait a second, this isn't actually happening. So now it's just climate change. And we're going to fight it. And he, he's going he's gonna to tax us to death in order to support whatever the so-called authorities tell them to do. He's going to be a puppet for the World Economic Forum. Where we will own nothing and be happy. We'll eat bugs and we'll be happy. We'll live in pods and we'll be happy. In other words, Wes Moore is a socialist. Uh, we could delve into this. Maybe I'll do another one on this later. Combat sea level rise. How many pictures could I show you showing that in the last two, three hundred years since, well, a hundred years since photography was introduced, the sea levels haven't risen? In fact, you've got politicians buying seaside properties all over the place. Now you tell me they really believe the ocean levels are rising if they're buying seaside properties. I mean, come on, man. To quote Joe Biden. But this is who Westmore is. This is what he's... All he's promoting is bigger state government, more bureaucracy, more taxpayer-funded programs paid for by you and me. The problem with this is, is he's going to get the vote of those who don't pay taxes. Because they know that he will give them food. And he will give them what? He'll give them their circuses and their bread to keep them occupied. So they don't have to deal with life's problems. Whereas responsible people like you and I will have to pay out the nose to support this. Civil rights, social justice again, equity. 
That's a socialist term. Social justice, socialist term. I'm tired of this. I'm just tired of it. Don't tell me about equity when I have to fight for everything I have. And yeah, I'm a white male, and I, I'm tired of people telling me, well, you're a white male, you don't have to fight for anything. Every single day of my life, I've worked. I've earned income. What I have, I bought with my money. All while paying enormous tax sums so these people can claim unequitableness and unfairness and get free handouts. I didn't get a free iPhone under Obama. I didn't get free anything under I still pay for my own health care. How's that equitable? But I also pay my taxes, which means Obamacare, or the uh, American Affordable Care Act, can allow people who don't work to get free health care. What happens if people like me stop working? A la on Rand. Wes Moore is a socialist. Now, if he's elected governor and the legislature remains uh, a, a majority socialist body, Maryland is doomed. We'll be just we'll be the East Coast California, and that's been said again and again and again. There's only one viable alternative right now in the governor's race, and that is Dan Cox. And we'll look at him, too, in another video, because I don't agree with him on everything either. Um, but Wes Moore will doom us as a state. Will doom us. Now, you know, our, our local area, we're close to West Virginia and all, and a move came up a while back for us to secede from Maryland, move into West Virginia, and it was mocked by many. How can we give up Maryland who's given us so much? What are they giving us? We get little pitiful handouts from these people downstate while they suck taxpayer money out of us to fund their rails, to fund their roads, to fund their education programs and continually fail. The Kerwin Commission, for example, billions of dollars are going to be wasted on an education program that will fail. And in about five years, they'll come up with another one and they'll tell us this one will work. Maryland's famous for that. Wes Moore is not a viable candidate. I don't care that he's a veteran. I don't care all that. His whole platform is based on socialism. And you better go figure out what socialism is. Go look up the 10 planks of the Communist Party and tell me how many of those Wes Moore supports. He's a socialist. He's a, a, a really a vile human being. And that doesn't even get into his biography in which he lied about where he came from and who he is. Welcome to Maryland. Hopefully somebody watches this, shares it out, learns a little bit, changes their vote over from this democratic socialist over to somebody that might support a little bit more freedom for people. Have a good day. Talk soon.